Hey y'all, Jessica from Pretty Prints and Paper. It's been a while and I am back. I have been meaning to do this video for a while and I was reminded recently that I haven't talked about how I use a digital calendar along with my bullet journal system and I thought I would walk you all through that um, because I believe in marrying both digital and analog and I'm gonna talk about how that works for me. So what you need to know is that I've been using Google Calendar since high school. So I am very used to the system. I find a comfort in it and I grew up with it. We used it in college even and I use it in my job. Um, I work at a Google-based campus. So we use Google to schedule meetings. We collaborate quite a bit. So there's not a lot of stuff that you do individually. And so Google Calendar becomes the hub for a lot of our meetings and events. And so that's why I use it all the time and I swear by it so I have two calendars I have one for my personal life and one for uh, my work life and I integrate them both by just keeping the views up this works for me because I am at a computer a lot and I also have the widget on my smartphone and so I always have access to my digital calendar so maybe that will work for you and maybe it won't but here's how I use it to plan uh, we set meetings quite Frequently. So we have tons and tons of meetings throughout the year and so it keeps track of all my meetings and events, things with friends that I'm doing. So that is easy and, and pretty straightforward. What I also use it for though is I backward plan with it. So for example, if I know that I have a check-in with someone, then what are the things I need to do to prepare for that check-in? And do I need to block off time to do it? Um, I know that I have this uh, meeting coming up. So if I know that I have prep materials for it, I will go back and block off time earlier in the day or earlier in the week to work on those deliverables so I'm prepared for that meeting or event. I know that I you know, volunteered to bring a certain food for game night and so I know that the days before I need to be preparing that in order to be ready for that. Something that I also do is when I set meetings, I know that my memory is very faulty and so I make sure that in the description I outline some of the things that I hope to get out of that meeting, what tasks we need to do to accomplish before that meeting and so everyone is on the same page and then when I comes to the day before and I'm reviewing my calendar, then I have some kind of reminder as to what this meeting is about to make it the most useful. Not only the backward planning for projects, and I do that for grading as well. If you work in higher ed, you know that time can disappear quite quickly when it comes to grading, so I always block off time to do that. So for example, I have prepping for the training that we're hosting next week. I just want to protect my time so that I can spend my time doing the things that are a priority and that are coming up that have deadlines and in that way when people look for time on my calendar it's an accurate reflection of what i'm doing i know that feeling at the end of the day where you've just been in meetings all day and you haven't really done any of the work um, another strategic thing that i've been trying to do when i can is because teaching is only part of my job or maybe you have multiple big projects in your job to think about which days are the days that you'll dedicate to that particular part of your job. So then I don't have to switch mindsets as much. If I plan all of my teaching things to happen on Tuesday, Thursday, so I have one-to-ones, grading, TA meetings, stuff like that, usually on Tuesday, Thursday, so I can stay in one mode all day rather than switching back and forth between advising and teaching and uh, training planning and stuff like that. So maybe that will also work for you or you know you want to intentionally switch to another project. So you have the morning dedicated to something and then you've blocked off that time or you then shift to the afternoon and you block off something else for that time. Um, I also do a lot of reminders for my future self. So if I know, if I find out that, oh yeah, I gotta remember to, to do that, then I can put it in the future. So a year ago, I put something on here that was renewing my doing business as, which is, uh, a legal thing for my business to be able to to do business as pretty prints and paper. 
I would not have just remembered that. I had to put it in literally a year ago when I originally did the paperwork and I knew I needed to remember to do that later. And so I do that with bills. I do that with things I need to cancel. How many subscriptions have I gone through and not canceled in time if I didn't have a reminder? Or things like remembering to uh, wish someone good luck on their interview or something like that. I put that in the future. The, the bullet journal future log just doesn't work for me. I don't look at it, but I look at my Google Calendar every day. So that's why I put it there. I'm going to make it as easy as possible for me to remind myself about what is important and what I need to do. So in addition to that, when I start booking events in my calendar, I tend to look two weeks ahead, three weeks ahead, just to get a glimpse as to what is coming up the pipeline. And I will add in white space. So there's a lot of times in my calendar where I will just write no, no. For example, if it's transit time between places, if I know that my meeting will not end until the end of that time block and I have a half hour walk or it's across campus or something like that, I add in no so that people don't schedule me back to back. The feeling of being rushed is really, really um, stressful for me. And so I just try to structure my day as much as possible with white space so that I have no rush between place to place and I can switch my mindset from one meeting to the next and process through what just happened, maybe that will be helpful for you as well. And then that kind of serves the people around you better as well if you're not as stressed. And then the last piece is scheduling my priorities and, or maybe that's funny saying that last, but my priorities. Anyway, so I schedule in the things that I want to focus on, for example, relationship. So if I haven't seen someone in a while, I will go in and say, hey, let's make a plan, let's commit to a time. And then we decide to get dinner and we decide to um, get together. And then there's also working out. So I have class pass, which means that I sign up for um, a variety of classes every month. And so I put those into my calendar from week to week. So blocking off the times in my calendar for the things that I care about. So if it's been a while since I've seen, you know, dinner with my family, I want to make sure that that gets put into my calendar as well. So whatever your important things are, I can see it in my calendar. I can see where I've spent my time and does it reflect the priorities that I want to live by. So that's how that also helps me. And then how does that integrate with my bullet journal? So here we go. Um, I already live in this a lot during the week, but then every Sunday I will sit down and I will draw out my weekly. So maybe weeklies aren't your thing, or maybe it's a daily. Either way, adapt it to what works for you. I draw this out and then I look at the weather just to see what do I have to prepare for in terms of supplies if I need to get that ready the night before. And then I have, I look through my Google Calendar and see what are the anchors of my time. So what are the meetings that I'm going to that are going to be the big pieces of my week? And I write those in. I use a vertical because you can see it mirrors that of the Google Calendar. So it's visually very similar. And I draw in the event appointment circles sometimes just throughout the day. So earlier in the day I put up here, it's a kind of a guesstimate. I don't do a time tracker in my bullet journal. I just kind of put it approximate. And then from there I can see, okay, great. And then filling in the tasks that prepare for those things. So at the top, I put my top two things I need to get done that day, and then filling in the rest of the tasks that I know surround these events that are happening or that I know I'm gonna get uh, priority to do that day. Then, that Sunday, fill all this out throughout each day. I will review the tasks that I need to do and, and throw stuff in throughout the day. So that's what Laura from How to Get Your Shit Together calls mind sweeping. And so throughout the day, I just dump it into here so I don't have to keep it in my head. If it's not in this week though, um, some people have like an upcoming block on their, on their bullet journal. I will put it into my Google Calendar. I will scroll forward to about the time that I need to and then be able to add a little event that is a reminder to myself, usually in like the 7, 8 a.m. time because, you know, I'm not doing anything in that time. So I can remember later in another Sunday planning meeting 
what is going on for that week and then I capture it then. That's what I do. I know that there's probably a couple little things. Um, I also use the app Boomerang on your Google Gmail and I can schedule emails to send later. So sometimes that helps me batch email. Email takes forever, especially in the higher ed world, y'all. It takes so long. So if I wanna sit and do a chunk of email, but I know that it's not timely for other people, then I can schedule it to send later. I can also send emails to send to myself. So I usually sign it with something cute, like from future Jessica or from past Jessica, and uh, use the technology in that way. Because again, this log, the future log in the bullet journal just doesn't quite work for me, and I've tried it, but if I'm already using this, then leverage that. Make your life easier. This is not one of those things where you're gonna try and force something to work if it doesn't work for you. So if you tried it a couple times and it's not working and you change stuff about it, give yourself permission to use what you know already works. That's the point of this. <laughs> you're trying to figure out the system that works best for you, your rhythm, your life, no one else's. My life is unique to me as yours is to you. And so give yourself permission to do what works for you and forget the rest. So that's my video today. If you have any questions or tips that I haven't covered, I would love to hear them. I'm always looking for new ideas. Let me know in the comments. Ask me some questions. Otherwise, uh, subscribe, like, share if you'd like. But most of all, I hope that you enjoy. I'll see you guys later. Bye.